Hello everyone, my name is Arthur and I'm a PhD candidate in electrical engineering at the University of Campinas, Brazil. In this video I'm going to talk about my research proposal entitled Separation of Audio Objects Based on the Principle of Sparsity. For those of you who have read my research proposal, I'm just going to repeat myself in spoken format. To give you all a heads up, we know that in scene-based audio format, spatial filters can be used to estimate the number and direction of sound sources in a sound field. However, if you record a sound field in a highly reverberant environment, different sound sources may exhibit overlapping features in both time and frequency, causing the separation of audio objects to become challenging, if not problematic. Formerly, the use of regularization techniques to promote sparsity have been proposed to overcome this problem, yet elevated levels of reverberation can reduce the detected sparsity of a sound field. Recently, many researchers resorted to deep learning techniques to enhance the separation of audio objects in these conditions. However, these models usually produce monodal outputs. At the same time, Recent analytical methods of masking can be used to enhance scene-based audio recordings whilst preserving its spatial information. Thus, this research proposal aims at the separation of audio objects from scene-based audio capture with spherical microphone arrays, which yields for spherical harmonics decomposition, which in turn yields the conversion into sparse plane wave density domain to identify diffuse components of sound fields, thereby estimating the direction of arrival of direct sound sources. Following this, an enhancement stage is proposed, using artificial neural networks to estimate masks that preserve binaural cues, therefore preserving the spatial information without the constraints of analytical methods. The separation stage can be performed with deep learning models, yet, since this will produce monaural outputs, a final stage of binaural rendering is proposed, using the DOA estimates as metadata for the audio objects, resulting in the conversion of scene-based audio format to an enhanced version of it. But let me take a step back and review some of the theory behind this proposal. In simple terms, we know that sounds can be characterized by level, pitch and timbre, where level is related to the magnitude of the displacement reached by air particles due to pressure variations. Pitch is related to the frequency of sounds and timbre is related to the number and magnitude of each frequency component of any given sound. The harmonic analysis is a method that allows for the identification of all frequency components and their respective magnitudes of any given sound. Here we can see plots for the time domain waveform and magnitude Fourier transform of the musical note C4 played by four different instruments, in which we can see that even if sounds have the same frequency components, differences in their magnitudes makes them distinguishable from each other. In air, sound propagates in waves of pressure at a limited speed of approximately 344 meters per second at 22 degrees Celsius. When it encounters an obstacle, sounds can transfer parts of its energy to the obstacle, and depending on its physical properties, different phenomena can be observed, like reflection, diffraction, resonance, etc. In enclosed spaces such as rooms, sounds can arrive at a listener with many discrete reflections from the surfaces of the walls, which can cause the auditory impression of reverberation. A subject's perception of sounds through the auditory system is called hearing and the human auditory system comprises a set of organs that work together to allow sounds to reach an individual's consciousness, enabling the appreciation of sound's characteristics. Physiologically, the human auditory system is subdivided into outer, middle and inner ear, where the outer ear is responsible for gathering sound energy, which then travels to the middle ear, which in turn assures that the energy transfer between outer and inner ear is efficient, while the inner ear is responsible for converting this energy into electrochemical impulses that are passed down to the brain via the auditory nerve. But the study of human hearing must also account for the interactions between the physical properties of sounds and the physiological and psychological aspects of the human auditory system, which allow for humans to perceive not only the level, pitch and timbre of sounds, but also the distance and direction of sound sources. And by localizing sound sources, humans are also able to selectively pay attention to a particular one, just like in the cocktail party effect, where people can focus on a particular source while filtering out the rest of the auditory stimuli. 
when an auditory cue relies on differences between the signals that reach both left and right ears, it is called a binaural cue, which can be used for localization. The perception of the azimuthal angle between a sound source and a subject's head is related to the interaural time difference, which occurs due to sound waves reaching an individual's right and left ears at different instants of time, and the interaural level difference, which occurs due to the acoustic shadowing effect of a subject's head, which results in an intensity difference between the signal levels that reach both right and left ears. The perception of elevation angles occur due to the physiology of the outer ear, with its shape full of resonant cavities, which can amplify or attenuate frequencies according to its geometry and the direction of arrival of sound waves. Hence, the sounds that reach a person's eardrums can be considered filtered versions of the sound waves emitted by the sound sources. The mathematical models that can describe these filters are called head-related transfer functions, which vary their spectral characteristics according to a subject's anthropometry. In sound technology, it took some time before this aspect of sound and hearing influenced the industry. The first device that could record and play back sounds was the phonograph, invented by Thomas Edison in 1877, which was monophonic. It was only in the 1930s that Alan Blumlein introduced the stereo system, which allowed for the creation of a panorama of sounds in a mix. Then, in the 1990s, the home theater concept made the 5.1 standard immensely popular, and subsequently more channels were added to different loudspeaker array configurations to achieve even more immersive experiences for both home and cinema theater applications. However, all these systems have the common disadvantage of being channel-based audio formats, which implies a dependency on the compatibility between audio production and the playback system they are designed for. Concurrently, in the 1970s, scene-based audio formats started to be developed, aiming at accurate capturing of live audio, since in microphone technology, different arrays with multiple microphones and different geometries can be used to capture a sound scene, improving the spatial information of immersive sound production. Lately, the higher order ambisonics format devised a mathematical framework to produce immersive sound becoming a synonym of scene-based audio. In general terms, it consists of the projection of spatial sound fields onto a set of spherical harmonic functions that contains a representation that is agnostic to the number and location of microphones into a fixed number of channels, which allows for the rendering of audio playback regardless of loudspeaker layouts. In contrast with channel-based and scene-based, Object-based audio formats emerged in the 1980s as sound possibilities for HDTV services. The overall concept of the object-based audio format is to represent sound scenes as multiple, discrete and uncorrelated audio signals with some associated metadata, which characterizes each sound source by its spatial position, audio level, width, etc. One great advantage of object-based audio is that it allows for end users to customize their listening experience, configuring each audio object's spatial position, volume, level, etc. Currently, the MPEG-H3D audio standard provides universal representation of encoded 3D sound in these formats. However, both channel-based and scene-based formats are part of the standard for compatibility reasons, while object-based audio allows unprecedented flexibility for end-users. Thus, conversion methods from scene-based to object-based audio are a highly demanded solution to enhance the end-user's experience. However, for sound scenes recorded in highly reverberant environments, this can be particularly challenging, if not problematic. To tackle this problem, that is, to separate audio objects from scene-based audio recorded in highly reverberant environments, firstly, we decided to constrain our proposal to sound fields that contain only a few sources. Then, we subdivided our proposed methodology into five stages, where Stage 1 deals with the sparsification of sound scenes, that is, to capture sparse sound scenes and then detect single source contributions to attenuate diffuse components of the sound field. Stage 2 deals with the estimation of the direction of arrival of each sound source by calculating steer response functions 
based on a dictionary of steering directions in space. Stage 3 deals with spatial audio enhancement, that is to enhance the sound scene using masks that preserve binary cues, thus preserving its spatial information. Stage 4 deals with the separation of audio objects, producing discrete and clean audio channels for each sound source, that together with their previously extracted spatial information form an object-based representation of the sound scene. And finally, stage 5 deals with binaural synthesis, which uses the separated audio objects and their extracted metadata to synthesize an enhanced representation of the sound scene that is free of excessive reverberation. It's important to notice that stage 1 is a pre-processing step for stage 2, and stage 3 is a pre-processing step for stage 4. Stage 2 outputs the extracted metadata from the sound scene, and stage 4 outputs the discrete and clean audio channels that form the object-based representation of the sound scene. Finally, stage 5 is a direct application that relies on these outputs to produce clear 3D sound, captured by a rigid spherical microphone array, even in environments with excessive reverberation. The methodology adopted in this proposal to promote sparsity and estimate the direction of arrival of each sound source under these circumstances is the reproduction of an algorithm entitled Residual Energy Test, or RENT, originally proposed by Shotelli and Hassi Habibogu in 2019. RENT is a method that relies on sparse plane wave density decomposition for the detection of short time Fourier transform time frequency beams that have single source contributions in a sound field. It can be implemented in eight steps, where step one is to obtain the short time Fourier transform for each of the signals captured by a rigid spherical microphone array. Step two is to obtain the spherical harmonic decomposition coefficients for each time frequency beam. Step 3 is to calculate the steered response functional vector at a finite number of directions quasi-uniformly sampled on the sphere, where orthogonal matching per suit can be used to obtain a sparse approximation. Step 4 is to find the dictionary atom which best matches the SRF vector. Step 5 is to calculate the residual error vector orthogonal to the SRF vector. Step 6 is to calculate one's complement of the ratio between the residual energy and the total energy of the SRF vector. Step 7 is to identify the set of time frequency beams for which this result is greater than a selected threshold. And step 8 is to register the index of the dictionary atom identified for each time frequency beam, found in step 4 as the DOA estimate for that time frequency beam. If properly reproduced, RENT can be used to implement both sparsification and direction of arrival estimation stages of this proposal. And here we can see an example of a global map of four sound sources obtained using Heopix software and RENT, taken from one of the author's PhD theses. As for the enhancement stage, approaches based on deep neural networks have been published over the years. However, not only these methods are constrained to speech signals, but they also lack the ability to preserve the spatial information that is essential for 3D sound reproduction. On the other hand, there are some recent analytical methods that claim to preserve the entirety of a desired sound field based on time frequency spatial masks, such as the TFS method, which was originally proposed by Herzog and Habits in 2019 and was then extended to the time frequency domain by Lugazi and Raffaelli in 2020. So, the methodology adopted in this proposal to enhance the sound scene while preserving its spatial information is to merge both approaches. Firstly, reproducing the TFS method to use it to compute masks that can be applied to audio signals in the SPWD domain. Then, a survey on deep neural network architectures that can be used to obtain such masks would be performed to see if it's possible to achieve the same results without the constraints of analytical methods. If properly reproduced, the TFS method could be used not only as a baseline but also to synthesize a dataset to train deep neural network models to enhance scene-based audio while preserving its spatial information. In contrast to spatial audio enhancement, which is a problem that remains to a substantial extent open, 
The separation of audio objects from 3D sound environments is an active field of research, and recent publications show that deep learning techniques are well suited for the separation of audio objects. In 2018, Stoller, Evert, and Dixon proposed the WaveU net. In 2019, Luo and Mesgarani proposed the Comptas net, and Luo et al. proposed the Filter and Sum network, or FASNet. In 2021, FASNet was the baseline model for the task 1 of the IEEE MLSP data challenge, and the method proposed by Ren et al. was ranked the first place, becoming the new baseline model for the second edition of the challenge, entitled Signal Processing Grand Challenge at IEEE ICASP 2022. Hence, this proposal does not aim to produce new methods for the separation of monaural audio sources from 3D reverberant sound fields, but to evaluate which of these methods can be used for our purposes. Finally, once the desired audio objects have been separated from the sound scene and their metadata have been extracted using each of the previously described methods, a binaural reproduction stage is proposed. Since the separation of audio objects stage of our proposal aims to produce discrete and clean audio signals, and the DOA stage aims to estimate the azimuthal and elevation angles of each sound source present in the sound field, a simple binaural synthesis approach can be accomplished by filtering the frequency domain representation of the uncorrelated audio signals with head-related transfer function pairs, or merely convolving their time domain representations with head-related impulse response pairs at each source's direction of arrival. As for the progress with this work so far, our lab is equipped with a rigid spherical microphone array manufactured by Visisonics, which consists of 64 microphones mounted on the surface of a sphere. With this array, we can record sound scenes via a MATLAB toolbox, a command line executable for Windows and Linux terminal. Monitoring is only possible in 32-bit digital audio workstation applications, such as Reaper, where the array is recognized as a USB audio device. Regarding the reproduction of the RENT algorithm, the pseudocode for this implementation is available in detail in one of the author's PhD theses, entitled Spherical Harmonics-Based Acoustic Scene Analysis for Object-Based Audio. Using this documentation, we were able to reproduce steps 1, 2, and 3 in Python language, which are only pre-processing steps for the algorithm. As for the spatial audio enhancement stage, the TFS masking method has already been translated into Python language, and here we can see how the original simulation script behaves for one channel only, where a brief speech signal is corrupted by additive pink noise, resulting in a noisy speech signal. The streets are narrow and full of sharp turns. The streets are narrow and full of sharp turns. After applying the TFS mask, the retrieved speech signal features some audible artifacts, which are also visible in the short time Fourier transform domain. The streets are narrow and full of sharp turns. Since the noise type considered in this proposal is reverberation, which is a convolutive noise instead of additive, the algorithm was further adapted using a brief segment of an electric guitar playing a B5 chord, which was then convolved with the room impulse response of a cathedral. After calculating the TFS mask using the room impulse response as noise sample, the retrieved guitar chord features a minor artifact which is related to the direct path of the room impulse response measurement. Now, experiments are being conducted to try and produce a synthetic dataset using music signals and room impulse response measurements together with the TFS masking method and the systematic literature review on audio enhancement and dereverberation using machine learning and deep learning techniques is in progress. With respect to the separation of audio objects stage, all the deep learning models that were already referenced in this video presentation are available in repositories for they are either challenge baseline codes or competition winner codes. And as for the binaural reproduction stage, some work has already been done in the past, which dealt with personalized head-related impulse response measurements for binaural synthesis, 
Although such measurements are out of scope of this proposal, the methodology employed in this work for the binaural synthesis can be revisited. Finally, an activity schedule for the rest of the duration of this project is presented here, where task 1 is related to learning how to use the spherical array that is available at our lab, which is already finished. Task 2 is related to the reproduction of the RAND algorithm, which is 25% completed. Task 4 is related to experiment with the TFS method, which is in progress. Task 6 is related to survey the latest machine and deep learning techniques used for audio enhancement and the reverberation, which is also in progress. Task 7 is related to the implementation of a deep learning model to compute TFS masks. Task 8 is related to reviewing classical methods for the separation of audio objects. Task 9 is related to experimenting with deep learning models for the separation of audio objects. And Task 11 is related to the final binaural synthesis stage of this proposal. Tasks colored in orange are related to the participation in events such as symposiums and congresses. Tasks colored in green are related to recess periods. Tasks colored in blue are related to disqualification exam and the future thesis defense. And the task colored in yellow is related to the publication of at least one paper in any international journal of prestige, as required by the candidate's graduate program. It is not mandatory to strictly follow this schedule, in the sense that tasks can be paused, advanced or postponed. Before ending this video, I would like to thank the members of the board for accepting the invitation, Dr. Chatelli and Professor Atux. And I would also like to thank Dr. Chatelli for his help with the RAND algorithm, Mr. Lugazi for his help with the TFS method, and my advisor, Professor Maziero, for his help with this proposal. Finally, I would also like to thank my lab colleagues, Douglas Abreu for helping me with the usage of the array, Karin Rosero for helping me with task 3, Fernanda Caldas for helping me with the pre-processing steps of RAND and Pedro Oliveira for his will to help me with tasks 6 and 7.